Welcome back to Fenrir guys and today we are joined by the one and only Sandy the Golden Retriever. Now if you saw the last video um, in the consultation I did with him we turned his really bad pulling on a lead into a beautiful heel working. Um, his owners were so happy that he's back with us today to work on their next biggest problem which is his recall. Now they can walk him lovely to heel. Um, again like I do with all my clients it's a game changer. It turns walking your dog from a miserable experience into the highlight of the day. That's already happened with them, but now what they want to do is be able to venture out into the outdoors and be able to have him reliable off lead with a good recall. So not only can they take him for walks nicely on lead, but they can start venturing out and really letting him have a bit of fun off lead. So that's what we're going to start working on today. And as is always the case when it comes to working on recall, usually if somebody comes to me with an adult dog with recall, your more standard Sandy Cum type cues uh, and markers and all of those types of things are ruined the dog has spent a long time in this case years knowing that that command of sandy come sometimes you can listen sometimes you can't so what we're going to do is start the process of moving it onto a whistle and where we can move it onto a whistle and guarantee 100 percent success we can then really drive the whistle through the roof in terms of how exciting it is and that it absolutely means that you must 100% of the time come back to me when you hear the pip on the whistle. So what I'm going to do is with all these cases I'm going to bring it all the way back. I've got him on my long line uh, slip lead and I'm just going to start to build up that concept of coming to me ends in a reward. That's all I want him to understand in this first part of the session. Then I can start adding the whistle and making sure that he understands that a whistle is a cue for that behavior that I want him to come back to me with. It always then ends in a really nice tasty treat, lots of praise and good positive things happen. Then once we've built that foundation layer, which is kind of the goal of today's session, we then layer it up with added distractions. We start bringing dogs out. We work on that when there's dogs around and then we can go out to different places new sights, smells, sounds, then eventually we take the lead off and we can retrain that recall 100% positively on a whistle. So again, we'll start that concept if he's kind of just doing his own thing now. But Sandy, come. Oh, yes. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Thank you. Good boy. And then what I'm going to do is Sandy break. Just let him have a little bit of free space. This is beautiful. And because already he's going to start to build that concept of, oh, there might be something good here. And you don't need tons of space to do this. I'm just going to kind of give him a little bit of space. And this is a perfect opportunity. Sandy, come. Yes. Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. Thank you. Oh, good boy. Oh, yes. And really layering up kind of my trifecta of rewarding a desirable behavior. He's getting food reward. He's getting physical praise and touch, and he's getting vocal inflection. That baby, oh yes, good boy, vocal inflection. That sends kind of the endorphins in a dog's mind racing, especially when you pair that vocal inflection with treat work across the board. When they hear that vocal inflection, those kind of endorphins and that adrenaline will spark, and it'll make it a fun, excitable, oh, positive experience. And that's what I want from companion dogs. We're not training working dogs. All I want is for you to be excited to come to me when I ask. So again, he sat lovely there. Sandy, come. Yes, oh good boy, oh good boy, oh good boy. Praise, food, vocal inflection, physical touch, everything that he ever wants. Coming back to me is an excellent and exciting opportunity. Now, I kind of knew that he'd be good at this and he'd pick it up really quickly under no distraction. So I'm just gonna drill this a couple more times and just focus on Sandy rather than kind of commentating to camera. The camera will roll, we might time lapse it or we might just cut ahead, but I'm gonna be doing nothing different than what I've just done. Probably 10 minutes of just charging this marker and charging this cue of coming to me, yes, good boy, is a good, exciting, positive thing. Sandy, come. Yes, good boy. That was a lovely one. So I will cut back to a little bit of commentary there. So that was the first time in probably like the seven or eight reps we've done where he decided not to come straight back to me. And that's the beauty of having a long line on. I gave him the opportunity, he didn't listen, and then I guided him. A little bit of lead pressure just to have that, oh, yep, sorry, boss, I'm on my way, and then I'm going to pay you when I come. Again, over time, if he performs in that way, he's not going to get the food and the praise and the vocal inflection. I'm going to guarantee success. He might get one of the three things, but over time, he's only going to get all three of the trifecta of success if... He comes to me with pip in his step, turns as soon as I ask for it, and we drive up that engagement and that excitement. Because so I don't want you to come back on your time, I want you to come back on my time. 
And again, using a long line allows us to guarantee that success because that is exactly where recoil goes wrong. If I was doing that not on a long line, I asked for that behavior and he ignored me, I've lost. And because he's over there, I've got no way of controlling that variable. A long line allows me to control the variable. So again, Sandy come. He's ignored, bit of pressure. Yes, good boy. So I'm still paying him at this stage because I want him to build that concept. But like I say, over the days and then weeks of drilling this, that payment probably wouldn't have come on that one. And it would only come when he makes that really quick decision. Sandy, come. Yes. Oh, good boy. Yes. So that was a good one. So you're getting everything from me on that one. Oh, good boy. What a good boy. Yes. And again, just leveling it up, leveling it up, practicing it. So I am now going to go back to drilling it. So we've just been drilling that repetition 10 minutes now. And you can see he's now super engaged with me. I absolutely love this. This is beautiful. He wants to work. We've made it fun. I've made myself exciting. There's only been a couple of times where we've had to use minor lead pressure just to come on, just reel him in. And then it, it creates this drive, this excitement. And that's exactly what we want to see. So now this is where the fun part starts, is we're going to start transitioning that over to a whistle. Now to do this, it's a very simple process. And we're kind of redirecting something that he already knows a little bit. We've started to build that coming to me as a good thing. And we're going to start to charge a new cue of the whistle. So the, there's finesse and timing involved in getting this right. What I want to do is make sure I've got plenty of space. I'm gonna use that command and get him coming to me. And then when he's coming, I'm gonna do repetitions of two pips on my whistle. So for me, recall is two pips, just one of those things. It's like cues, you can have it, whatever you want it to be. But if you want to do advanced whistle work, you can put extended whistle blasts on one thing. One blast means one, three means another. Constant blast means another thing. It's just another way to cue a behavior. For me, recall is a pip pip. So what you're gonna notice is I'm gonna get him coming to me and then I'm gonna put two pips on it as he's coming to me, repetitions of two pips. Again, then it's just back to putting the work in, drilling that, setting him up for success, getting him coming to me, putting two pips on it. And what that'll start to do in his mind is associate the two pips of my whistle, meaning coming to me because something good's about to happen and you're about to get some treats, some praise, some vocal inflection. Eventually, like with any type of behavior, essentially we're kind of luring and queuing up the behavior eventually we can start to remove the law which is getting him coming to me and then we're left with just the cue which will be pip pip means yes come to me because that behavior is about to be marked rewarded and praised so that's kind of the expectations now so this is a perfect example i wanted to do it because it's with a dog that's this kind of engaged to get him at the end of a long line is often quite difficult and we've got that so the cameraman's going to kind of show very carefully because as soon as we make a fun movement he's going to go there we go. That was always going to happen. But I mean, that's beautiful because he's going to the cameraman. So Sandy, come. Yes! Oh, good boy! What a good boy! What a good boy! Oh, beautiful! That was beautiful! Absolutely brilliant. So again, well, that's a lovely opportunity. I'm going to wait for him to be going over to the cameraman. And then Sandy, come. Sandy. Yes! Oh, beautiful boy. Oh, beautiful boy. Yes. What a good boy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Excellent. And again, this is getting him high drive. It's getting him excitable, but I don't mind that. I actually really want it to be a fun, exciting process. <laughs> You're too clever. You are a clever boy. So again, we're just going to kind of set him up to let him have a wander. You could do this with a partner. I'll get my cameraman to try and get him a bit of his attention. And try and keep his attention when he gets there. That's beautiful. Sandy. That's it. Then I'm going to get a Sandy come. Yes. Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. You so clever. Oh, you are clever boy. Yes. You are clever boy. Oh, you are clever boy. Again, the trifecta, verbal inflection, vocal inflection, praise, physical praise. Dogs love a good rustle. Oh, yes. Good boy. And then food, paying that, that's a really wonderful behavior. And again, we're gonna cut here because I'm just gonna do, I reckon with Sandy being so high drive, I'm gonna get another five, 10 minutes out of this and just putting the reps in, putting the reps in, putting the work in, setting them up for success, praising that success, but most importantly, really charging the cue 
of pip pip means get to me as quickly as possible because i promise you something good's going to happen and if you don't i've got the long line just to remind you come back in get him going and as soon as he starts to make that decision any tension or pressure on the lead goes and it's back to drawing him in with vocal inflection praise and food so we've been drilling that now five or ten minutes he's really getting it you can start to tell that actually the pip on the whistle which is very common for dogs especially gun dogs it seems that it gets them hyped up it gets them energetic and wanting to go it's just something that's uh, wonderful so again what i'm going to start to do now is you're going to see this happen for the first time we're coming towards the end of a session we're nearing 30 minutes which is how long i'd like to make this session We've got sandy all day so we're going to get three of these sessions in in a day um, and then give him some time to kind of play and then have some great time to decompress relax and get ready for the next session but what i'd really like to do here to finish on a high is be able to get him coming to me without the verbal cue of the sandy come and replace it with just the whistle cue and see whether he'll respond to just the whistle cue i think we're about there again that's what i've got the lead if he gets a little bit confused i can just help him out because of all the work we've been doing with lead pressure and lead communication that's not a punishment it's just a method of communicating that he now really easily understands so it's just a way of helping him go oh okay yeah i get it i get it cool and then again tension pressure goes and we're back to really positive so again he's just watching off in the distance there which is lovely i'm gonna try just a really short one to start with get my lead so i've got a little bit ready in case i need the pressure oh yes oh good boy oh yes good boy sandy that was such a good one you can even have two oh you're such a good boy you're such a good boy so again perfect needed no lead pressure let's try again oh, i want it i want him to purely make the decision so i'm gonna let him go and again, sometimes with these things, you just need a bit of patience. Again, he's so engaged with me, he wants to work, but I want him to not be paying attention and then purely only, the only thing he's responding to is the whistle cue. That way, we'll, we'll know that we've captured the behaviour and he's associating my two pips with come to me, uh, rather than him associating me moving away or any kind of hand gestures. So it'd be really nice. I'm just going to slowly ignore him. I'm going to hope that he looks in the different direction <laughs> you so clever you too clever and then again if what you can do is obviously if you're doing this at home alone just patience waiting for a moment oh yes that was perfect that was perfect oh good boy yes oh good boy oh yes oh amazing yes you can have a high value yes so that's where a food uh, a meat uh, treat goes in instead of a lower value kibble or standard training treat i've come down to his level i'm really letting him know that was wonderful yes you such a good boy yes you love it you do that was beautiful that we have clearly captured that behavior of him associating that two pips on a whistle means get to me as quickly as you can because something good's about to happen does that mean he's recall trained absolutely not what it does mean is that the foundations are being laid so again we've got probably five more minutes of this session and we're just going to drill that so again it'd be nice to get the cameraman to film him so he's not paying attention to me whatsoever yes oh good boy yes excellent good boy oh thank you sandy good boy yes physical praise vocal inflection food reward this is a wonderful thing do you need to do that with everything you treat it, uh, teaching a dog. No, and I don't think that you should. You wanna save your high value, that kind of level of intensity for things that are very difficult to dogs or where they display exceptional behavior. Recall for Sandy is very challenging, especially in high distraction environments. So you're getting a jackpot from me, all three things when you come to me, especially when you do so now on a whistle, because it's that kind of concept in his mind that I need to ingrain low distraction so that when we are out in distractions and he has that, oh, there's a squirrel over there and he hears that pip pip, I know he's heard it and it needs to be able to make that decision of, oh, I want to do that, but that thing's much more important. That's why we do high value, high reward when it comes to recall. yes what a clever boy what a clever boy yes yes clever boy oh clever boy yes 
And there we go, guys. That was a really good one to finish on. What I'm going to do is maybe get one more, just something really simple. Sit, yes. Oh, good boy. Yes, good boy. And Sandy break. And now free dog. Sandy doesn't know the break command yet. We're kind of free shaping it, letting him understand that that means go and do what you want now. Formal training's over. Um, if I work with Sandy more, we'll really formally do break with things like threshold manners, mealtime manners, things like that. But you are such a good boy. I'm becoming very fond of you. You're going to be wonderful. We're going to get you there. Absolutely. So there we go, guys. Like I say, he's still really eager to work, but it's important that you finish on a high. We've got two more sessions today. And those other two sessions are going to be literally what you just observed at the end of this last session. So the goal for today is to really drive up the whistle. He's going to come back next week. And then that's when I'm going to start to bring other dogs out. And I'm hoping building foundations today and then get him really kind of like a higher level of distraction. Two days isn't enough to get perfect recall, but we can absolutely get him to be recalling under distraction, especially with other dogs, and we'll put the work in. And then we'll kind of have some coaching sessions with the owner to teach them how they can go and just put the reps in, because at that point, it's just about, like I say, putting the reps in, training. Things don't happen overnight with a lot of behaviours, things like teaching a dog to walk to heel. Yes, I can do that very quickly. Something like recall is a, an ongoing process, but we're clearly making huge progress today, aren't we, buddy? really start to charge that whistle then next week start to add in distractions we'll see how that goes but i've got high hopes for him because he's very like i say eager to work looking to me for guidance and direction he just needed a bit of leadership and a bit of that direction that he so keenly wants which is why he's so eager and wants to carry on working because he just lives for it so yeah wonderful case to work with i hope you enjoyed it if you're struggling with recall this is an excellent way to kind of get out there reshape recall um, but put the work in and you can get out in the great outdoors and enjoy life with a wonderful pooch like this one here.